I'm Scotty, and I'm addicted to mushrooms. Mushroom crafts. What did you think I meant? So I wasn't gonna do another craft video for a while, but then I got the itch. Kind of literally because my eyes were swelling and my face was broken out from presumably something I'm allergic to. But because of that, I didn't want to show my mug on camera. So I did a video where I could mostly just record without my face. So this week we are making some mushrooms. And when I say this week, I mean, I already made them. You're gonna be going back in time and making them with me because instead of just doing two separate clips and pretending like I was recording in the past, I decided to be real with you guys. I've already made them and it went swimmingly. But I know a lot of you are excited for this video. We are all fairy core, goblin core, cottage core, all the core peoples, girlies, gremlins. So yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I have made mushrooms before for my fairy mirror DIY that I did, I think like a year ago. Time is an illusion. But that time I used air dry foam clay. And this time I am using air dry clay, Crayola brand, because I'm cheap like that. So if you want to join me and make those with me, go right ahead. As I go, I will obviously be telling you guys what I'm using, what techniques I'm using, what I learned, because even though this went pretty well, I still learned some stuff here and there. As you guys know, this is never truly a tutorial because I do a lot of stuff the first time and fly by the seat of my pants and take you guys along with me. However, it is still an educational video. You can still glean some things from it. So hopefully you do and hopefully this inspires you. And if you're sick and tired of seeing mushrooms everywhere, get over it. Someone tried to say that mushrooms are as to the 2020s as the 2010s were to the, the mustache and monocle, but you know what? Mustaches are still cool, so joke's on you. Without further ado, let us make some mushrooms. First, acquire some clay. I'm using Crayola because my budget is smaller than my pencil thin lips. And then I have a bunch of these sculpting tools, which I don't remember when I bought them or where I bought them. They were during one of my many hyper-focus phases where I was trying to get into clay um, many, many years ago. I'm I'm actually pretty sure they're for sculpting fondant, but they work. A couple of things I learned while working with this specific clay, it can dry out a little bit as you use it. So have a tiny little bowl or cup of water to kind of dip your fingers in to moisten up the clay again. Also, I sometimes would dip my actual sculpting tools into the water and then use that to smooth it out as I kind of sculpted in the little details. This helped out a lot because as the clay would kind of dry out, it would crumble rather than kind of like smooth. So I found this really useful. And then if I overworked a spot, I would again, dip my finger in and smooth it out over the top of it just to get a really nice smooth surface. And this is air dry clay, so I don't need to bake it, which was a huge plus for me. I have heard that air dry clay isn't as strong, but but honestly, my Sculpty baked clay crumbled like a mother, so um, it's it's about the same it, it, when, in terms of hardness, honestly. When it comes to sculpting mushrooms, I started out with reference images, but then I just kind of started winging it. They are natural thingamajigs, you know, not, not plants, they're fun guys. They're great at parties, they're fun guys. You need to embrace the imperfections when it comes to mushrooms. I made mine smooth on the top and then gave them little lines on the bottom and then when it comes to the skirt, I was creating a skirt by just like putting another piece around the stem, but I didn't really like how that looked. So what I ended up doing is just sculpting into the stem with the the more like uh, the, the rough tool. I don't know what you call that. It's like spiky. And then I would, it, I would like sculpt underneath it. It's really hard to explain. When it comes to sculpting mushrooms, I find that it's a really intuitive process. Just pop on a podcast, get some reference in images just feel it man it's kind of like when you're on actual what did he say hey. uh, never mind
I didn't put stems on all of them. I made a lot of floating mushies, if that makes sense. The ones with stems, I wanted to look like the stem was kind of coming out of the wall and then partially the mushroom, which I don't know how realistic that is. Botanical, but botanist peoples will, will let me know in the comments. But um, I emulated the floating mushrooms after the types of mushrooms that like grow out of logs. Again, it's probably not super accurate to how they actually look, but I had an idea for when I would have them. I had an idea for what I wanted to use them for. So I made quite a few of them. When it comes to painting the mushrooms, I kind of wanted to use a technique I saw on TikTok for painting miniatures for D&D. So I started with a dark color. Instead of using black, I actually used a dark brown because I wanted it to have more of a warmth, more of a dirt ish color and then over that i just dry brushed on a cream color like a mushroom tan color and i feel like this really gave it gave that this really gave it a lot of depth because i added a lot of texture with the different tools and with the dry brushing technique the dark colors will stay in the recesses in the little grooves so it really helps to sell like the texture and the depth so that way i'm not having to go in and really do like an airbrushed look so this is this is just, just a technique that i really like i use it a lot for cosplay but i kind of like haven't really been employing it a lot with my my DIY crafty crafts but I really liked how it looks on the mushrooms and since they have like a warmer more brown undertone the dark brown worked pretty perfect I had to go out and get a different can and when I say I had to go out and get I mean my husband had to go out and get it late at night so that I could finish this project because the can that we had was old because we don't use flat brown a lot in our cosplays because I use a different method for painting leather or you know painting foam to look like leather so um, thank you husband for for helping me with that I was a very insistent that I get the base coat down that day even though I ended up delaying this video you know what it, it, I have an excuse okay I'm mentally ill I have crippling depression the cool thing about the dry brushing technique is that the coats dry pretty quickly so if you're impatient like me once you get through all your mushrooms if you made a, a lot of them like I did you can go in with your next coat onto the you know on your mushrooms so after I did just the base coat of the cream I kind of went in with the lighter cream just to kind of like make it pop more because after the first coat dried it it was a little bit too dark for me which is fine because it's all about the layers man I was pretty indecisive about the colors of the mushrooms. Initially, I wanted some of them to be more yellowish, but as you're gonna see, I abandoned that colorway. But primarily for the bigger mushrooms, I went with a regular like red cap, classic mushroomy look. And it's the same for these. I had to really layer up the colors. I kind of regret starting with a dark color for, for the tops just because it was a little bit harder to layer that color on to make it really vibrant, but it all works out in the end because we are nothing if not incredibly stubborn. Finally, for the floating mushrooms, I ended up going for more of a brown, like woody look to them. I wanted to put like stripes on them to emulate, I believe the type of mushroom that grow off of logs, but it didn't really look the greatest to be honest, but you know, um, we try, we, we, uh, we do our best. Now, my technique for the dots, I obviously I, I brought up some reference images because I wanted them to look more natural and not cartoony. Typically when you see the cartoony depictions of the red cap mushrooms, they just do like polka dots, very uniform, but the actual mushrooms themselves, the dots are very sporadic. Some are bigger, some are smaller. Sometimes they're like merged together. And I kind of experimented with one of my mushrooms, the one of the floating red cap ones, well, the only floating red cap one. I made the dots more three-dimensional, which I've seen on some mushrooms. Um, I don't know if that's accurate, but it looks pretty cool, so. But in terms of the dots, I actually used the other end of one of my sculpting tools, which kind of looks like a dotting tool that you would use for nail polish. So if you have a nail polish kit, 
and you have a dotting tool, you can use that as well. I typically use my Posca pen when I add little dots, but I did want them to be more three-dimensional, so I wanted to glob on. I just used white acrylic paint. And also the tip of my Posca pen is a bit fine and I was afraid that it was going to rub off some of the paint. So the brown ones are all right. I don't hate them, but honestly, I'm super proud of how the red ones came out. I am very excited to put these somewhere. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet. Um, I'll address that in the outro. Oh, and I did seal them. Just so you know, I used a clear matte, I think it's like an art medium top coat thing. Um, I'll, I'll edit that in what I, what I used. And we're back. And we have mushrooms, which I have shown you previously, but I'm gonna show them again because I'm super proud of them. I'm still not sure how I'm gonna put this one on the wall. This one, I, I was smart and I put a thumbtack, like a big old, like a, the long boy thumbtack in here. So it goes in the wall pretty well. This one, I added a whole, this is, exper this is an experiment with mushrooms. Stop it to see how I want to use them. So this one kind of like has a hole, so we'll figure out how to hang it. I might just put a nail up. This one, I had used one of like the normal push thumbtacks. And as you can see, it came out. So I need to figure out how to hang this on the wall. I might just add it to a mirror and just like glue it on, but we, we shall see. Now the other mushrooms, the woody mushrooms, I actually used them for a project, which will be featured in a future video. So you guys will get a better view of that and how it is styled in my room when I do that. And uh, keep an eye out. You guys may see, you may see these guys in the future. You might be wondering how do, what are these for? Um, what are the practical applications? Obviously to put on your wall and look stinking cute. However you decide to mount them, but also fridge magnets, that'd be cute. And I've seen people even like fashion these to look more like shelfy bits, which is kind of one of my um, inspirations. I usually put my inspiration at the beginning of of the videos but like this is kind of what inspired me to make it obviously I didn't do the exact and these are like more shelves or hooks but I just I just want mushrooms on the wall and I knew that if I put mushrooms on the wall and made them shelves and put anything on them it would detract from the mushroominess so I I didn't do that I just want mushrooms on my wall because you know you guys know I want to cover every square inch of my wall <laughs> walls, all the walls, with with whimsical bits and bobs and things, not everything being practical because squirrel brain. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this inspired you to make mushrooms. If you're using them for decor to put on your mirrors or make magnets or what have you, just, just make something today, man, or this week or whenever, and just have fun. You may not know how to do things. You may be making things up as you go along, but at least you did the thing. We'll be seeing more mushrooms in the future. And this was just a quick little video because I'm a little burned out right now, but um, I, have an, I have an idea for another video with the mirror, so. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think I already said that but I love you and uh, like and subscribe and all the things bye <laughs>